Do you see the first MCQ on your screen? Yes. Okay. Okay, let's start. A 30 year old lady at 36 weeks of pregnancy present with blood pressure mildly elevated, proteinuria, headache, and mild upper abdominal pain. What's the appropriate management? What do you think? Is it to give the magnesium sulfate? Is it to observe? Is it to full bed rest? Is it to follow up in one week? And why? Of course, I want you to tell me the answer and tell me why. I highlighted for you. The blood pressure is elevated. There is a proteinuria. There is a headache and mild upper abdominal pain. The question is about what's the most, look, it's the most appropriate management. Okay, the most appropriate management. Okay, just a second. Dr. Priyanka, Dr. Priyanka, why it is, why it is D? Why you choose D? Follow up in one week? Is it, it's clear, it's clear, you have to know. What is the preeclampsia? The answer, the answer is to give magnesium sulfate because it's a preeclampsia. Preeclampsia is proteinuria plus headache plus elevating, elevated blood pressure. No, doctor, it's, don't think about it's a transient. Don't go further. We are a doctor, believe me, think like you are a doctor sitting in a clinic and you, you receive this patient. You receive this patient. She has proteinuria, she has a headache, she has elevated blood pressure. You will tell her, just go to the home and I will follow you after one week. Of course, no. Of course, you have to do action. You have to give appropriate treatment, not to wait until she got clantic fit. Patient has preeclampsia. We have to treat her. We have to give magnesium sulfate. The, and the question is about what is the most appropriate? Yes, yes. If we got more than 37, yes, we can go for uh, uh, advising, advice for delivery, not to do it immediately. Okay, it's clear. I want you to know that when the preeclampsia is come in this scenario, those are a question of February 2018. Preeclampsia, you have to put it write down in your notes, headache plus proteinuria plus elevated blood pressure plus pregnant women, third trimester equal Preeclampsia, the most of the uh, treatment of choice is magnesium sulfate. Okay. I, wa I want you all to prepare a papers and a pen to write down what, what's what, what are the keys uh, that I am giving you? So in this question, I want you to write down headache plus proteinuria plus elevated blood pressure plus pregnancy third, uh, third trimester equal preeclampsia. Preeclampsia equal magnesium sulfate.
I will try to post the keys, but uh, not uh, for the first two weeks, but after that, because in those two two weeks I have uh, exam uh, in eleven of August, eleventh of August. After that, I will I will try to print uh, this note for you. Is it 34 weeks or no, 37 weeks for advising of delivery? Okay, we will go to the second question. Uh -huh. I put this question, simple eye image with, was there asking what is next? I put this question. Who can tell me the answer? A or B or C or D or E, all of them are wrong. Because this is incomplete scenario. Where is the picture of the eye? So we can decide what what's, uh, what's about. Yes, because it's incomplete question. I want I want you to focus on just the complete question. This is incomplete. Directly delete it from your mind. Don't don't think about it. Where's the photo? There is no photo. I cannot depend on this. Okay, the recaller just said simple eye. Simple eye of what? What disease? Okay. Let's go to the third. In an area of typhoid outbreak. Dr. Laura, uh, yes, I, I read I, I will try to just remind, remember, remind me in this red eye, I will make a topic for you on the red eye. Okay, it will be easy. Okay, question three. In an area, there is a typhoid outbreak. A girl comes with the two days of the area and abdominal pain, protein stool is normal, what you will check next? I highlighted the typhoid outbreak. A girl come with the typhoid outbreak. Stool examination was normal. In typhoid, doctor. In typhoid, doctor. In typhoid outbreak, the first investigation. Now write down. Typhoid outbreak. The first investigation to be done is the general stool examination. Here, the general stool examination was normal. The stool examination was normal. So what to do next? The next, of course, will be typhoid. How, how we can ty diagnose typhoid? Of course, it's by blood culture, not by stool culture. Yes, it's by blood culture. I want you to think like that. Thank you, Dr. Naomi. You first, your first impression was stool culture, but after explanation, you got the point and you go for the blood culture. I want you to think like that, okay? I want you to pick out the important keys in the MCQ. In this MCQ, 
the speaking about typhoid. Typhoid, how we can diagnose typhoid? Typhoid can be diagnosed by stool examination or by blood culture. The best one is the blood culture. So if the stool was normal, we will go directly to do the blood culture. Okay, question number four. Uh, this is, uh -huh. this is very important one. This is very important topic. An old man with acute onset pain in the lower back with some urinary symptom think as, as he remember there was retention in the MCQ. Significant went weight loss, anal sphincter tone was normal, no on, on digital rectal examination. He was uh, enlarged irregular prostate. Prostate, what's the next? Okay, the question is, what's next? Dullness on palpation, two finger breath, above symptoms, slightly elevated temperature. Still might not be exactly the same. Uh -huh. I know this question very well. It's uh, talking about the, an old man presented to you with the back pain and with the, uh, some features like retention. Just a second. Sorry about that. An old man, acute onset back pain uh, with lower uh, urinary symptoms, dysuria, retention, and on examination there was uh, enlarged prostate. So what to do next? Dullness and blah, 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 blah. All of this are uh, because of the recaller didn't remember the full scenario. Just to the what is next? This is the scenario. Okay. What do you think is the next? The next is to do chest X-ray or CT spine or trans transrectal ultrasound or bladder scan or bladder ultrasound or uh, PSA, prostate specific antigen, and why? And tell me why. This is very, very important question and very tricky one. These are the full option, I make it. most of you writing uh, prostatic specific antigen but why so a regular prostate so first we have to do mm -hmm. as the initial test would be okay Okay, to rule, uh, okay, okay. Let me tell you the trick in this, in this uh, question. The tricks here is that this is 
an emergency patient. Please listen to me. This is an old man presented to you with acute pain. Okay? This is acute. This is a man presented to you to the emergency suffering from those features with urine retention. As simple as that. As simple as that. We have to know the volume of the urine in the bladder. So we have to do bladder scan. We have to do ultrasound for the bladder. Okay, doctor, I, I agree with you. PSA is needed, but not now. He is acute, he is in the emergency. I have to relieve his retention. This is the priority. This is the next step. This is not what's the best investigation. This is what's the next step. The next step is to relieve his retention. It's very common. We face it in the emergency day by day. We have to relieve the retention. After that, we will go further for the uh, uh, PSA or, or CT spine or CT abdomen, whatever. But the priority is for the retention. Or, or this could become in two scenarios. The same scenario, but in the choices, you will see analgesia. The analgesia is, must be given before uh, ultrasound of the bladder and before putting Foley's catheter. This is acute patient, please. This is acute onset pain. So the, the next step will be analgesia if available. In the choices, if there is no analgesia, you will go for the next is to relieve his retention. Okay. That's how the tricks are uh, working in, with the AMC. Please, you have to think as a practical. Retention, everyone of you, I believe that everyone. Okay, Dr. Lara, this is an acute patient. That's mean this is a patient come to you in the emergency. Suffering from pain and retention. Suffering from pain your and retention. If you found in your exam what whatever was the scenario, the patient presented to the emergency with pain and in the choices there is a uh, choice of analgesia, go directly to the analgesia. This is the first step and also this is the next step. If there is catheter, yes, yes, yes. If there is catheterization, it's also a common scenario. If there is, I told you, there's uh, both analgesia and catheterization, you have to go to analgesia. Analgesia is the uh, main one, is the first one, okay? For this MCQ, you have to know how much volume of urine, uh, of the volume of bladder, so we will go for bladder scan. Is it clear now for you? It's common scenario. Patient old with urine retention, just keep it like this. Urine retention equal ultrasound of the bladder equal catheterization. Acute pain, acute pain in any scenario of MCQ, next step will be analgesia. That's good. Okay. Let's go to the question number five. 39 weeks pregnant lady come with labor pain. 
Sinto was giving appropriately Sinto scene. CTG was done with show heart rate of 140, which dropped to 70. Oh my God. And came back to 140 in two minutes. Asking what's the next? Appropriate management. Question does not include any basic measure given to her, like left uh, spinal, left lateral position, oxygen, and the fluid. Okay. The choices are stop syntocinin, fatal scalp sampling, cesarean section, tighter uh, to increase dose of syntocinin, or give O2 to the mother via oxygen face mask. Oh, A, yes. What else? Why it's A? Next stop or reduce because it cause fatal mistake. Mm -hmm. There is a stop, uh, Doctor uh, Bala. There is a stop, Sintosin. What we call this this topic? What what we can call it? A fatal distress? No. I want you to read. It's not a fatal distress. I want you to read about this topic. Yes, variable deceleration. It's a very important topic. The deceleration, now I want you to write. We have three types of deceleration. Yes, we have three types of deceleration. We have, uh, let me, uh, just a second. I want to, to draw on the screen. And I want you to see. You can see my drawing. You can. Okay. Now I, w I want you. Just a second. Now I want you to to listen carefully about the deceleration. We have three types of deceleration. All of them are important. Okay, we have the early deceleration, early deceleration. Okay, we have the late. Okay, and we have the variable. The early deceleration, uh, that's mean uh, the heartbeat and the contraction are came together like this. This is, let's say, heartbeat of the uh, children and this is the contraction or the uh, opposite this is uh, this is the contraction of the mother and this is the heartbeat of the fetus okay so whenever this is a line the same line and this is the same line whenever there is contraction there will be a drop in the beat of the heart of the baby. Okay, well, at the end of the contraction, the beat will return to normal. This is called early deceleration. The late deceleration is, is happened like this. This is the mother contraction, but the fetal contraction is not start for the same second, but just after it, it will start and it will, come like this. So here is 
the start and here's the end okay so it is just late this is late we call it late okay the variable deceleration it's it's just a drop a drop for less than 80 less than 80 beats per minute for the baby this is mean that's mean the variable is the most dangerous one the variables mean your fetus is dying the baby is dying but the late is alarming sign not like the variable the variable the baby is dying okay here the drop in heartbeat not less than 100 also here not less than 100 okay what are the causes you have to know early and late and variable early deceleration happened when there is fetal head compression when there is fetal head compression the late happened when there is fetal hypoxia fetal hypoxia the variable deceleration occur when there is cord compression okay early deceleration need no interaction and it's not come in the mcqs okay just i want you to understand this the deceleration the the late deceleration is caused by fetal hypoxia and the next step will be scalp fetal scalp ph monitoring so when we have a late deceleration caused it's caused by fetal hypoxia and the next step will be scalp ph if the question is um, a picture of the late deceleration and the question is about what is the cause the cause is fetal hypoxia what's the treatment what's the next step the next step will be scalp ph okay i want you uh, i want you to write uh, down uh, that you have to see a pictures of early deceleration because it come as a picture and asking you what's this is it early or late or variable de deceleration so you have to know the picture of early deceleration the late picture also the late deceleration picture also i want you to know it i want you to know that uh, the eight the late deceleration caused by fetal hypoxia and the next step will be scalp ph the variable deceleration as this uh, question come in two scenario scenario with the picture and scenario without the picture the scenario with with the picture is easy as the scenario uh, without picture because the drop in heartbeat fetal heartbeat will be uh, more than uh, 80 beats per minute and this is caused by as i told you cord compression what is the treatment what is the treatment as simple as sorry about that as simple as that i told you when you have variable deceleration this is me this is mean the fetus is dying so we have to do resuscitation emergency resuscitation not directly to go to the cesarean section please you have to know the steps the steps are the steps are 
if the patient on uh, syntocin or uh, oxytocin, we should stop them, the first step, and after that we will give IV fluid, resuscitation in the emergency, IV fluid, oxygen, and we will change the position of the patient to the left lateral or right lateral position. If no response on this resuscitation, we will go to the cesarean section. Okay, is it clear for you? Less than, less than, I'm sorry, less than 80. If the fetal heart rate dropped less than 80, it is variable deceleration. deceleration. That's meaning of the fetus is dying. We have to resuscitate. We have to, the, to stop the drugs, oxytocin, syntocin. We have to stop them. We have to resuscitate the mother. And then if resuscitation failed, we have to go for cesarean section. And the resuscitation in this condition consists of IV fluid, oxygen uh, 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 as the first step, and the next step will be changing the position of the patient. Okay, clear for everyone? Okay. Does the time matter here? No, it doesn't, it never matter. In variable deceleration, you have a dying fetus. So you have to interact immediately. If syntocin does not an infusion, if there is no syntocin given in the scenario and no syntocin in the uh, is the option uh, in the uh, result, there there will be fluid and oxygen. Okay, so you can next to give fluid and oxygen. Yes. If in the scenario said we give oxygen and we give a fluid and we stop the asyntocin, it's it's came like this. What's the next? The next will be change the position of the patient to the left lateral position. Dr. Pala, what do you mean by your question? Is this not bradycardia? There's, uh, Dr. Hafsa, there is no management for the early deceleration. Steps of resuscitation. Steps of resuscitation in variable deceleration are three. The first one is to give oxygen and the fluid and to change the position of the patient to the left lateral position. Uh, Dr. Lara, it's not come like this as ABC. It's, you have to know the scenario exactly. Fetal scalp sampling, no. Fetal uh, scalp pH monitoring, scalp pH monitoring, you will uh, choose it if the scenario, if you see the picture of uh, 
late deceleration. Fetal scalp sampling will be never the choice in deceleration. Yes, I will review the steps again, please. Number one, the priority is to stop syntocene or oxytocin. The priority is to stop the drug and then to resuscitate, resuscitate the patient by oxygen, fluid, and change the position to left lateral position. Lastly, we can go for cesarean section. You are welcome, Dr. Nadia. What else? Hmm. Yes, Dr. Mariam. Okay. I want you from this scenario, this MCQ, to see uh, pictures for the deceleration, early and late, and the variable deceleration. No need for further reading about the topic. I just want you to see a pictures of that. Okay. Question number six. Also the same scenario, lady full term with adequate contraction was mentioned on CTG, everything was progressively normal, progressing normal, suddenly, Look out, suddenly uh, there was a deceleration of fetal heart rate dropping to 70 beat per minute for four minutes. I don't care about the minutes for one minute, three minutes, I don't care. What's the next most appropriate step? What's the next? Asking about the next, as I told you, what's the next in this question? It is absolutely stop syntocin. Yes, 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 yes. I want you like this. I want you oriented. Okay. Question number seven. Young and young and in indigenous male present to you with insomnia. Uh, fear of darkness and seeing mamo. He has been having this symptom after the death of his mother. Just wait me to co to to complete it. Which of the following scheduled? Uh, with which of the following should be next step in his treatment? Is it to give him benzodiazepine or to counseling with ambiguous counselor or antipsychotic agents? B. Why why you you want to choose B? I want the tricks from this question. Or there's one trick. Why you choose this option? Yes, for any uh, indigenous or uh, any aboriginal people, just leave them for their uh, indigenous and uh, their uh, main Australian doctors. Okay, so indigenous, keep those two words in your mind indigenous and uh, <coughs> and the uh, aboriginal people okay yes aboriginal yes
a 15 year old girl having difficulty in having difficulty in concentration concentrating I think it's concentration better having difficulty in concentration she constantly fights with father and needs support in school because she cannot maintain task and use multiple drugs like amphetamine and marijuana drug addict Tilenjit, I don't know what's this word difficulty for her sleep could be facing difficulty in her sleep denied any hallucination and suicidal thought what will you do for her okay we have a crazy girl here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. telling what what to do is it to liaise with the father is to discuss the safety plan with, with the parents give necessary or cognitive behavior or tell school to support her more and why what you can take from this scenario I can see a 15 year old so it's a pediatric age group need support in the school and what to do next father no you have to go for the safety plan you have to discuss this with the caregiver the caregiver for this uh, pediatric age group is the parents not only the father is it to give cesare no not to give cesare she, she 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 denied any hallucination or thought or suicidal thoughts should so she didn't need any anti antidepressant okay yes she denied the hallucination and suicidal so she needs support so we have to discuss the safety plan with the parents with the caregiver not the parents because sometimes um, I call this question as um, the situation questions in in each month there is a new situation uh, questions you have to know the plan because they are changing those types of questions are changing you have to know the plan how to reach the diagnosis how to reach uh, what's the need so here we are talking about pediatric and need support pediatric age and need support okay of course she is a drug addict and she she is let's let's say any girl and uh, living uh, let's say most of girls are excuse me for this word to to make it clear uh, are crazy in this age so most of them they use drugs marijuana and vitamin if they are available uh, on parties so this is this is uh, I cannot say it's normal but it looks like normal in some culture okay so this is not the, not the scenario to give scissory okay we have to discuss this with the family with the parents with the caregiver
there is no uh, doctor uh, Lara there is no diagnosis for her you can say it is she's an overactive uh, child okay we have to discuss this with the parent and to to put her on a plan for the treatment no not conduct disorder no 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 absolutely no the conduct will make a crime that's the criminal child it's not like this the scenario of conduct disorder is not like this and th this is a situation scenario okay situation scenario doesn't um, the 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 question doesn't depend on what's the diagnosis it's depend on, on what's your action you as a doctor think that you receive this patient what you will do that's the te that's uh, to test your ability of distinguish what's the best option for this patient could be teenage uh, rebellion as Dr. Bala said okay an old woman who is a widow I think it's also a situation an old woman this is how MCQs come an old woman who is widow who seems well in past but since she became a widow and she moves to uh, to the house and start to stay alone this is comma one of the neighbor had noticed her strange behavior she starts to dig some ground in front of the house and when neighbor reached near her and looked at her she then aroused him and get aggressive and accused him and all neighbors are imposters after that she became calm down and agreed to be seen by a medical clinic which one of the following expl explain her condition is it thought forms is it mood is it orientation is it delirium what do you think mood and the question mood this is delirium why you said this is delirium yes you know the trick yes yes this is delirium this is delirium how we know that this is delirium delirium put it in your notes delirium equal acute confusional state acute confusional state the patient is crazy in the night for some hours and then become uh, calm down and uh, obey your command delirium equal acute confusional state the patient became become crazy become aggressive at night and then the patient become calm uh, later on this is um, called sun downing it's night symptom symptoms are coming in the night no 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 delirium and del delusion is another topic this is delirium delirium equal acute confusional state
delirium i want you to write to write this delirium equal acute confusional state equal acute altered orientation equal sun downing sun downing means the patient got night symptoms in the night the patient become aggressive and paranoid in the second line write down delirium most common cause in elderly is UTI urinary tract infection so the investigation what is the next investigation the same scenario and this is all the women if the question is what's the next examination and in the choices there is I will I will back again the most put it in your mind write down it the most common cause of delirium in the elderly is the urinary tract infection and in the exam if the question is the same like this like question number nine and the the I really be, um, what are why it's related to UTI believe me I don't know I just found that writing in uh, uh, in one of the papers for the delirium I didn't ask why because I don't know really I have seen it maybe I have seen it uh, in a uh, few recalls they are asking about what's the next uh, uh, what's the next investigation so I tried my heart to find what's the next investigation in cases of delirium I found the paper uh, speaking about the delirium in the old ma old the old people is associated with uh, UTI and the next investigation will be the general urine examination so I want you to save it like this delirium is acute confusional state is acute altered orientation is a sundowning symptoms happened in the night patient become aggressive and paranoid and then became uh, yes 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 and then yes urine analysis and then became calm and the most common cause for the delirium or for the acute confusional state is the UTI and the next investigation will be the urine analysis or general urine examination is the same okay 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 dr lara dr one of the neighbor has noticed strange behavior she start to dig some ground uh, in the front of the house and when neighbors reach near her and look at her she then aroused him
deletion tremon i don't know what's the deletion tremon okay in this scenario yes there is no sundowning but there is acute confusional state but in the scenario in the complete scenario in your exam you will face uh, you, you will see that the patient got sundowning features okay Now, 68 year old uh, male or female, male with the CA prostate with the MI, myocardial infarction, with the drug elution stent, glycine score seven. What's the treatment? <coughs> Sorry. What's the treatment? This is incomplete scenario, but from the things what we see from the things we see we can just place on a score seven for ca prostate what's the treatment believe me it's incomplete scenario but i want you to know regarding the treatment of ca prostate according to just glycine score if we have class on a score below six, six and below, we will go to choose active surveillance or continue surveillance. If we have class on uh, seven, we have either to choose the radical uh, prost uh, prostatectomy or uh, the radiation. If we have a class on score more than eight to 10, we have to go for androgen ablation therapy or deprivation therapy. So I will repeat it again. For a class on less, for a class on equal six and less than six, we will choose active surveillance. If the class on R7, we will choose the radical prostatectomy or radiational therapy. If it is eight and more up to 10, we will choose androgen ablation therapy. Does it clear for all? Very good. There is another scenario for the cal uh, cancer prostate. We will uh, discuss it later when we reach it. The scenario that contain quarter of the uh, pieces of uh, uh, biopsies I will not discuss it now I will discuss it later I want you just to know about the class on score 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 here class on 7 we can either choose radical prostatectomy or radiation there is no radiation here there's radiotherapy, external beam radiotherapy. So we need other uh, information so, to, so we can choose either this or this. Okay. But for me, for me, if only this question, uh, I will use this. The answer will be either B or D, but because of the patient had MI, 
and uh, had a stent, I will not choose the surgery at all. I will do. I I will go for radiotherapy. Yes, yes, yes. There's another topic about about the MI and the stent and the 12 months and six months and about the emergency surgery, how to do it, emergency operation, how to do it, and patient on stent, on aspirin, on uh, clobidogrel. All of this scenario, we will discuss it when when we face it. Regarding this scenario only, regarding this scenario, it's incomplete scenario as I told you before. And the class on, we will, we will, we will check the class on, it's seven, so we have uh, two options. Either radical prostatectomy is true or radiotherapy is true. So if the patient got the surgery, uh, the MI and do the stent, uh, during the 12 months and more we can go for surgery but if less we will not go for surgery this is incomplete scenario but for me i will prefer the radiotherapy because of the stent okay Okay, now uh, we want to take uh, a break for just uh, for just uh, seven minutes, not more. Okay, stay on the uh, Zoom and take a rest for just seven minutes. Okay, see you. I want to take my coffee. <laughs> Don't draw on the, on the screen, please. Okay. Question number 11. Female with history of melanoma with a CT scan given, what's your diagnosis? Some neuro sign, no fever, gradual onset. What's your diagnosis for this? Is it metastatic melanoma? Is it cerebral abscess, glioma, intracerebral hemorrhage? Hey, yes, metastatic melanoma. Whenever you see, whenever it's, whenever you see a melanoma, history of melanoma, yes, it's very common. History of uh, melanoma with a brain CT picture, even if you cannot read this CT picture directly to choose the metastatic melanoma. It's a very common scenario. I think it came also in uh, March 2018. Yes, yes, it came in March 2018. Okay. Female on carbamazepine recently started uh, trimethoprim for UTI with confusion, electrolyte level given, hyponatremia, the sodium was 112, rest were normal. Okay. 
what would you do? Is it to stop carbamazepine and give hypertonic saline? Is it to stop trimethoprim and give normal saline? Is it, what is your choices? What is your choice? Give hypertonic saline, severe symptom, yes, hypertonic saline, and stop carbamazepine. Yes, it is absolutely, it's A. Yes, it's simple, and why it's A? Because uh, you have to know that carbamazepine is one of the drugs that lower the level of a sodium, okay? And whenever this, whenever, That's why, Dr. Lara, listen to me. Carbamazepine is a common cause of the uh, hyponatremia. Carbamazepine is a common cause of hyponatremia. And in this scenario, because of the hyponatremia is below 120 and the patient has symptoms, neurological symptoms, so we will give hypertonic saline. So we will stop the medication, the offending medication, and we will give hypertonic saline. So it is A, okay? Regarding the scenario of, of hyponatremia, I want you to know hyponatremia, drug causing hyponatremia is carbamazepine. If hyponatremia below 120 with symptoms, this needs urgent correction. If there is no symptoms, the corrections should be slowly by normal saline, not by hypertonic. In this scenario, there is confusion and there is sodium below 120, so we will give hypertonic and we will stop the offending medication, which is carbamazepine. Okay? Yes, if more than 120 and lower than normal, we will also correct it slowly. We will correct it slowly by fluid restriction and giving normal saline only. Yes, the best, the first will be fluid restriction. Okay. Now, question number 13. What's the best method of study for studying the relation uh, between Fatigue and accident in truck driver. It's ran randomized control trials. Is it cohort? Is it case control? Is it case report? Is it systemic review? Systemic review has no, uh, there's no study of uh, named systemic review. So this is a wrong uh, option. Okay, so is it randomized control tray or cohort uh, or case control or case report and why? I want you to understand every one of them because all of them are coming in the exam. So I want you to know which, which, which is this and which study is this. Forward looking study. Mm. Backward, yes, not forward, Dr. Priyanka. This is this is uh, doctors. This is a case control study. Okay, this is 
backward study i will just uh, listen to me we have accident and we came to the uh, driver of this uh, truck who made the accident and we are asking about if he was fatigued at the time of drive, driving or not. So we have the diagnosis, we have the accident and we are asking the driver if he had fatigue before. So this is backward study. Looking backward, this is retrospective study. We have the event and we are looking for the back. So this is called case control study. Dr. Lara, I don't care if he is dead. If he is dead, the scenario is not like this. Okay. Just keep with the with the scenarios. If he's dead, we cannot take anything from that. Okay, okay, okay. What is the case report study? The case report study, you have to know, it's uh, done for just a few number of cases, the rare cases, the uncommon condition, okay? The cohort study is the opposite of the case control, is that we have the event and we are looking for the future. We are looking forward. The randomized clinical trials are those experimental uh, studies like those uh, done by the pharmaceutical uh, companies. All are uh, randomized control uh, trials. Does it clear for you? Randomized experimental cohort looking forward case control looking backward, case report for the rare uncommon conditions. Okay. Now, a rural area doctor wants to carry out a study to find the relation of rotavirus diarrhea in the first year of the life and the low birth weight. What is this study? Is it cohort? Is it case control? Is it cross-sectional? Is it randomized clinical, uh, randomized trials? Is it case series? Look for the diagnosis. Where is the diagnosis here? Where is the diagnosis here? <coughs> Not randomly. Please, doctors. Look to the diagnosis. The diagnosis is rotaviral diarrhea. Okay, the doctor wants to study if there is relation with this diarrhea and what? And the low birth, low birth weight. Low birth weight means the, the birth weight of the baby. So it's happened before the diarrhea. So we are we have the diarrhea now and we are looking if the patient previously yes we are looking backward if the patient previously had low birth weight or not looking backward is case control not cohort doctor priyanka please 
case control. Okay, it's the same case control study. We have here the accident and we are looking if he was fatigued at the time of driving. Now we have the area and we are looking if this baby got low birth weight previously when he was born. Okay. That's good. Another patient with the patient with the blood value giving pancytopenia with the blood cell around 65%. What's the diagnosis? Is it acute leukemia? Is it leukemoid reaction, chronic and multiple myeloma? What's the diagnosis? Yes, Chan. It's A, absolutely, it's A because of blast cell. Yes, whenever you see blast cell, it is acute leukemia. Okay. Why not the chronic? Chronic will not uh, cause uh, the, the uh, blood cell to be less than 70%, like this. But I want you to know the important question about this. If we have the same scenario, the same scenario, Okay, it, it comes sometime in the exam. Patient with the blood value, blah, 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 I don't care about them, and got a blast cell around 60, 65, 70, but the question is not the diagnosis. The question is, what is the next investigation? What you will do for this patient? You put in your mind that this is a scenario of acute leukemia. So what's the investigation for acute leukemia? Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely, it's bone marrow. Thank you so much. Now you are oriented. So the key for acute leukemia is the blast cell and the uh, diagnosis can be made by bone marrow aspiration. Okay, pregnant women with uh, at 34 weeks gestation presented at 32 weeks for antenatal care. Believe me, this is absolutely uh, not complete scenario because at 34, then at 32, presented at 32. Oh, what's crazy that. Whatever, presented, a woman presented at 32 weeks for antenatal care where her first ultrasound was done. Everything was normal. She has returned today with complaint that something had Someone had told her she looks small. What will you do? What? This is another uh, situation uh, question to test your ability to take a decision. What will you do? Say to assure her that her prognosis is normal. What do you think? Is it to repeat abdominal artery? Uh-huh. 
just try. A patient now presented, she is on 34 weeks. But two weeks ago, she came to, she, she came to you and you do uh, the ultrasound and everything was normal. Now, someone told her that she looks like small. Oh, you look like small. She come to you afraid that she is uh, a small, she has a small baby or she has something abnormal. Okay, R remember you examined her two weeks ago and everything was normal. Now, what you will do for this lady? Do you repeat the ultrasound? Do you do examination for the uh, fundal high? Do you examine her on the next visit, not this visit? And if Fendel High has been shown continuous linear growth, not to worry, what you will do? Yes, it is B. Examination is a prior to ultrasound. You will examine her. And then if you found something abnormal, you will do for further investigation. Yes, examination, absolutely right. Yes, Dr. Lara, to be sure, but you are uh, following protocol. The protocol said history, then examination, then investigation, then provisional diagnosis, and then the treatment. Here, you can go directly to choose the examination. Any patient will present to you with normal previous examination, you will re-examine her again before taking any decision to make any investigation. Okay? Yes. History, then examination, then investigation, and then you will go for a provisional diagnosis and then the treatment. Okay. Mother with hepatitis C positive. What's to avoid during pregnancy to avoid transmission of hepatitis C to the infant? Very common question, very important question. Fetal scalp sampling, fetal scalp sampling. Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely all of you are uh, right. It's to avoid fetal scalp sampling why? Keep it in mind, hepatitis C pregnant lady, just be away from the head of the fetus. So if you find in your exam uh, that fetal scalp sampling is not mentioned, but mentioned anything related to the head of the fetus, choose it. Just be away from the head of the fetus. Be away from the head of the fetus. Okay. Child got superficial abrasions and lacerations. After falling on the garden bed, he has a history of two DTPA, immunization, vaccination, and uh, what is the most appropriate step after cleaning the wound? Is it to give tetanus toxoid and uh, topical antibiotic cream 
or uh, oral penicillin or uh, tetanus with uh, immunoglobulin or DTPA and poster after two months or immunoglobulin. Why it is the Dr. Lara, Dr. Priyanka? And why it's E, Dr. Maryam, Dr. Nadia? Yes. Okay. Okay, I want you to know that even in uh, any clean wound, there is no need for uh, immunoglobulin in the pediatric age group or in the age below 10 years old, to be exactly. In this question, we will choose D, DTPA and uh, POSTAR after uh, two months. There is no rule for immunoglobulins below 10 years uh, old children. That's the rule of uh, immunoglobulin there. Okay, Dr. Maryam, this is the point of this question. You got these two options. You will go for the DTPA and poster after two months not to give immunoglobulin. Does it clear for everyone? No immunoglobulin in children. Okay. 